What's going on guys and welcome back to my era to career on FIFA 13. We are in the month of December and oh boy have we got a lot of games to get through in this edition of my career mode on FIFA 13. As you should know by now, December is the busiest month in the footballing season. So expect to be sat here for around about 14 or so minutes. Also, I know some of you awesome peeps have been asking for the squad report. I'm going to be putting that in in this video right at the end though. So if you're just here for the squad report, skip ahead. Move on, Buster. And you're probably wondering, what the hell was that intro all about? It sounded like you was like running past us at such a high speed and then disappearing off into the distance. That was just me paying homage to the great Jesse Cox. Guys, if you're not subscribed to that guy... What are you playing at? After you've watched this video, of course, after the, after you've watched this video, you wouldn't want to miss this video. Hit the uh, the search engine just above the video and type in Jesse Cox. Go and subscribe to him. Watch a few of his videos if you haven't already. Anyway, let's talk business. The first fixture of this video was against Arsenal in the Capital One Cup. I think I touched on it. I, j I just mentioned it in the previous video. This fixture was absolutely amazing. We was playing at the Emirates Stadium and it was a quarter-final too. So it was a fixture to win, to get through to the semi-final, hopefully win that, go through to the final and retain our Capital One Cup, which we won last season. Well, Arsenal took the lead in the second half. At the start of the second half, through a goal from Dumbia. He was looking for a goal in the first half. He was so close to getting it as well. But his wish came true in the second half, making it 1-0. We then pushed Arsenal to their limits and Jordan Ayew got Everton's first goal of the game making it 1-1 after following up Christian Tello's shot. Everything about this game should have been, it should have been the cup final not the quarter final and how that wasn't a penalty I do not know. There was the full time whistle the game ended 1-1 that meant we was going to go into extra time. There are the stats very even even though we just edged it on possession. But it was a very even game. Both teams, we ju it was like trying to draw blood from a stone with Arsenal. Their defence was top notch as well as ours. They um, they did break through in the first period of extra time. But that was pro because some of the team were looking very fatigued. Our stamina was down. We was very tired, some of the players. And we have made all of our substitutions as well. As you all know from my Man United career as well, I'm not a fan of having to take penalties at the end of a game. It's just... The, the pressure, I just can't take the pressure, man. The game can go either way now. I mean, it, it just all depends on how the goalkeepers are, what their mindset is. Um, there's a, the final stats after 120 minutes being played. 50-50 on possession, it's a very even game. And Giroud was up first for Arsenal to take the first penalty. And Tim Howard saves it. He had been putting in such a wonderful performance throughout the whole of the game, throughout 120 minutes. And that was the first penalty taken. Arsenal missed it. And Jordan A, who stepped up to take Everton's first penalty, he missed that one too. So it was nil-nil still. And up stepped Aaron Ramsey, or Aaron Ramsey, as the commentator likes to call him on FIFA 13. And Tim Howard saves it again. It's still nil-nil. That was Arsenal's second chance. Jelovic for Everton makes it 1-0 on penalties. We had the upper hand now. We had that advantage to go through to the semi-final. Santi Gazzola, could he make it 1-1? He steps up. And what is it with the computer as well? Every time it's awarded the penalty, it always goes for a cheeky chip. Well, Santi Gazzola got the, uh, the the first goal for Arsenal through the penalty. Leighton Bain steps up for Everton for the next penalty, makes it 2-1. As I say, we've got that upper hand, we've got that advantage. We're just waiting for Arsenal to pile under the pressure. Oxlade Chamberlain steps up and again he goes for another chip. Tim Howard saves it and it all comes down to this man, Christian Tello. The Loney from FC Barcelona. Could he do it for Everton? Could he put us through to the semi-finals of the Capital One Cup? He does! 3-1 on penalties. Everton are through. What an amazing game. And I wonder who we're going to be playing now in the, uh, the semi-final of the Capital One Cup. Looking forward to it. It's going to be a good one and hopefully we can retain that trophy this season. Anyway, moving on to our next fixture. It was Day 5 in the Europa League group stage and we're playing away against Feyenoord here is the group stage we are top by one point so we had to make sure that we beat Feyenoord if we wanted to go through to the next round here was my standard level we've got Borman in goal Coleman, Hibbert, Duffy, Avedo, 
Francisco Junior, a lot of players coming in, a lot of changes since we played Arsenal, which was also midweek as well. I think we played them on the Tuesday, and then we played Feyenoord on the Thursday. Absolutely mental. And then we've got a Premier League game on the weekend, which I think they've given us a kind of a rest for Sunday. Anyway, Blondy Miloni from Manchester United goes down injured. It's not looking too good for him, but he still manages to walk off, but limping off. Uh, Fellaini has to come on to replace him I didn't really want to bring him on I didn't have any other strikers on the bench either so he had to play up front for, for the time being Stephen Pienaar after returning from his injury after being out for three or so weeks he got the first and only goal of the game so we picked up the three points against Feyenoord and as you can see here Nicholas Blandy has suffered a lateral collateral ligament and is going to be out for four months that is a huge knock on his playing career because once he returns back fully fit He's going to be returning to Manchester United and I don't see him getting first team over there. John Heitinger then comes to me. He wants an upgraded contract, which I'm happy to give him because his partnership with Jaggy Elka, even at their, their age now, it's just spot on. You, you can't fault it. It's kind of reminiscent to the Rio Ferdinand, Nemanja Vidic uh, partnership at the back when they're at their best. Our next fixture against Bolton Wanderers was in the BPL. There is my start 11. And a lot of players have returned back to full fitness after that big fixture that we played a midweek against Arsenal in the Capital One Cup quarter final. And you will notice as well, Quincy Owusu Bay was in the starting 11. I thought, you know what, he's been sidelined now for quite a while. So I thought I'd give him a chance, but he couldn't step up to the challenge. So I'm thinking now he's definitely going to be leaving when that transfer window reopens in January, which is just a couple of weeks away. Um, and Fellaini got the first and only goal for that game against Bolton. Got us the three points and added to the league table. Just beautiful. Moving on swiftly to our next fixture in the BPL against Swansea City. And look at that for the league table. Everton in second position. Doesn't that look amazing? Got to admit, it really does. But that could all change because if we lost against Swansea and Spurs won, they would leapfrog us. You know how it works in the Premier League. But it's just great to know that we are situated there. There is Swansea starting 11. They've got their full team out. That is probably their strongest side that they have. It was Everton starting 11. The return of Darren Bent and Jordan Ayew after that big fixture against Arsenal. They are back fully fit. Tarat plays in the camp position. And Ola John and Zaha in midfield along with Darren Gibson. It was going to be a good game. I was going to enjoy this one. Well, the sun was out just like it is in real life. So there is no excuse. And Darren Bent made it 1-0 to Everton in the seventh minute. What a time to score. And that was going to give us enough confidence to go on and get another goal. And of course, get those three points to add to the league table. But unfortunately, the referee had to come along and ruin the party, didn't he? Pablo Hernandez, who is on my shortlist, was working his way through dribbling with those amazing dribbling skills. And the ref came in, said there will definitely be a penalty there. Michu stepped up to take it. Could Borman continue his form of saving the penalties? But unfortunately for him, he didn't. And in the 25th minute, Swansea draw level. It was still all to play for, but not much really happened in the second half. And the game ended 1-1. So we walk away from Swansea with just a point to add to the league table when it should have been three points instead. Everton's next fixture would see them back at Goodison Park to play AEK Athens in the last group stage fixture of the Europa League. I did forget to mention earlier on when we played Feyenoord, after we beat them 1-0, that meant that we had confirmed our spot in the next round of the Europa League. Who will we get? I'm not too sure just yet, but I'm seriously looking forward to it. Even if Feyenoord were to beat Molde in their last fixture of the group stage, they still wouldn't be able to go top of the group. Notice as well with the start 11, PNR returns to the squad. He's been putting in some great performances recently. I decided to give Zaha a rest as well and start Kevin Morales. See if he could get himself on the score sheet. Because as you saw in the last video, Kevin Morales, he was putting in some sensational performances. Saving Everton's bacon from time to time as well. Getting goals right, left and centre. But unfortunately for Morales, December just wasn't the best month for him. This Everton side kept grinding Athens down to the very last second of the game. But we just couldn't break duck. We couldn't get a goal against them, which was 
which was unfortunate because it would have been nice to have won this game, which would have given us the confidence to go through to the next round, whoever we would be playing. And just to confirm it, there is the final group standings. We did win the group, awesome source, but could you just imagine if we either lost or drew to Feyenoord in the last fixture earlier on in this video, it would have been very tight. And check this out as well, we play Arsenal in the next round of the FA Cup. I don't think I'm going to be able to take it because the last game against them in the Capital One Cup was immense. Just imagine what it's going to be like at Goodison Park with the home fans behind us. So we move on to our second to last fixture in this video. It's against Everton's rivals, Liverpool, and we was playing at Goodison Park. So I had to put out my best starting eleven. Borman and goal, Varane, Jagielka, Heiting and Baines, Koke, Zaha, Tello. We got Fellaini starting in that cam position and Darren Bent and Jordan Ayew starting up front. I'm also going to show you guys the Liverpool starting 11 for this game against us because I think I have some Liverpool fans that have subscribed to me. Make yourself known in the comments section below. Don't be shy now. That is what Brendan Rodgers has done with the starting 11 and it always seems to me on FIFA 13 on career mode that it's always Stuart Downing or Suarez that puts in the good performances for the team and that's why they do so well. Amazing. Anyway, into the game and Christian Tello. Seriously, did that just happen? I didn't want him to hit the finesse shot on his left foot. I wanted it on his right foot and he would have killed that one round Rainer and he would have opened up the scoring for Everton. Would have been 1-0 by now. Just seven minutes or so before full time, Liverpool had a corner. Nothing really came of it apart from the penalty they was given by the ref. Recently though, it seems as though it's either me or the computer that's getting screwed over by a penalty awarded through a set piece. It's just so frustrating. Suarez stepped up anyway for the penalty, took it. For a split second, I thought it was going to bounce off the post and it was going to be defended, but the ball just rolled across the line and Liverpool pick up the three points at Goodison Park and they walk away with that. It's just so disappointing to lose from a poor decision made by the referee. So guys, this is it, our next and last fixture of this video. I know, I know, I know, but do stay tuned though because the squad report is at the end of this fixture. Against Tottenham Hotspurs at White Hart Lane, it was still snowing outside. This Everton side had to move on from that last fixture against Liverpool and focus on this one against Tottenham because Tottenham, as always, were going to prove to be a difficult opposition to play against, especially in these conditions with the snow absolutely pelting down. Uh, there is some comedy for you. How hilarious was that? Both central defenders for Tottenham falling over each other. Oh, please. And the referee then comes storming into the area and awards us the penalty. That's right. We got a penalty, which Tarat steps up to take. Hammers it right down the middle of the goal. Lloris didn't stand a chance and makes it 1-0 to Everton in the 10th minute. This truly was awesome stuff. And if it's about to get better, Jelovic picks out the head of Darren Benz. But Lloris... Saves that ball from that diving header from Bent like an absolute champ. Tottenham look to make it 1-1, but Borman stopping them in the tracks. The final score was 1-0 to Everton. We picked up the three points at White Hart Lane after what was a difficult game with the conditions as well. Wow, I'm getting kind of thirsty here. Ah, that is much better. There is nothing better than a cool beverage on a hot summer's day like this. Anyway guys, here is the squad report of Everton come the end of the year 2013. We'll be moving on to 2014 in the next video, which will be the month of January. I'm looking forward to it. There's going to be a lot of important games to be played in the next month. We've got Man United and we've also got Man City who are currently at the top of the table. So we've got to deal with them. And I think that's at Goodison Park. So it's going to be a bit of a difficult challenge, but I think we should be able to uh, pull off a win there and get those three points. And we also continue our campaign in the Europa League. Not too sure who we've got just yet, but once it's announced, I'm sure we can, uh, we can beat them and go through to the next round. And just taking a look at the squad report right now as I'm playing it back, I have to say that I'm really impressed with the progress some of these players are making, such as my signer from last season, Koke. We've also got Francisco Jr. who was here before I... Uh, I started managing Everton and they're just putting in the hard work and hard work does eventually pay off and at the moment I'm really pleased with this Everton side. I don't think I'm going to be signing anyone in the January transfer window. I don't think I need to at the moment. As I said, you'll probably see the um, Quincy Owusu-Bey leave in the team but I don't think you'll be seeing any 
anyone coming in. Anyway guys, that is the end of this episode. I do hope you've enjoyed. I will see you in the next episode. Peace out.